This is Blackpool. It's flat. And this is Blackpool's restaurant of the year. You never call out the orders? Yeah, but uh, I mean, I'm, I'm struggling in my own mind at the minute. No, no, really. This is Blackpool's restaurant of the year. Table two, two moves, one bread and butter pudding, have I got it? I'm fucking, I'm destroyed. Yeah. I, that's how I feel. I feel like I never want to fucking cook again. And this is how not to run a restaurant. We can't cook a no, fucking muscle. You, fucking yeah. you, yeah. Uh, yeah. plonker, twat. Blackpool is Britain's biggest and brasses resort, home to the nation's favourite C-list comedians and an unprecedented choice of chip shops. Love it or loathe it, this place doesn't do anything by halves. I used to come to Blackpool all the time uh, with Mum and Dad, in fact, this time of year, to come and have a look at the lights. And um, Mum used to go and play bingo, would you believe? Same trams, <laughs> same lights, same noise, and same freezing weather. Shit, it's cold. Catering for the massive 12 million tourists that come here every year, there are more than 650 places to eat, and I'm looking for the one that's been crowned Blackpool Tourist Board Restaurant of the Year. Is that it? That can't be it. It actually looks like a sex shop. Having co-managed a restaurant in the local casino, 46-year-old Dave Jackson and 30-year-old partner Dawn Brindley pulled their life savings to offer Blackpool a unique oasis of home-cooked cuisine. It's got a cracking atmosphere when there's people in it. It's lovely and I, I, I love it. And to see it empty, we did it last night. We stood here for three hours and I just could have gone home in tears. 18 months later, they're barely breaking even, with turnover at a paltry £500 a week. We won an award, we've got pretty good reviews. But we still can't get people up the stairs. It's very depressing putting food, fresh food in the bin after two or three days. It's only the ground floor greasy spoon that's stopping them from going under. Morning. morning. Clubway, this up. is it. Upstairs, first floor. Restaurant of the year. Yes, sir. In Clubway's upstairs restaurant, Dawn looks after the front of house mm -hmm. and comes up with the menu ideas, while Dave rustles them up in the third floor kitchen. Hi, Dave. Hi, Gordon. So this is it? This is it, yeah. This is my little bit. Excellent. What's that you're doing there? Butter pizza, sultana, bread and butter pudding. Popular? Yeah, very popular. Uh -huh. Occasionally, uh, well, I forget about them. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the uh, most popular dishes on the menu, what are they? Main course is chicken's popular. Yep. Lamb's quite popular. This sounds intriguing. Flake salmon with strawberries. So Flake... I, yeah, that was popular. Topped with lemon and lime and honey dressing. Yeah. Soup of the moment. What does that mean? Soup of the moment. It's whatever, whichever one we do, rather than put on an actual soup. So, sort of like, I mean, we do tomato and cointro at the moment. We've got tomato and cointro. Jesus, where did that one come from? So again, I think Dawn came out. I came up with the tomato, and she added the cointro. So, God. but yeah, it works well. Does it? Yeah, it flies out. In order for me to get up to speed, yeah. I'd like to be, eat off it. Fine. Okay, no problem. I'll see you in five. That I wasn't expecting because nothing's on. As a starter, I've ordered one of Dave's favourite dishes. Thank you. A salad of salmon and strawberries with a lime and honey dressing. No one's ever been in my kitchen. And now I'm cooking for Gordon Ramsay and my fingers won't work. My brain won't work. <laughs> what can I do? A three course meal at Clubway costs between 20 and 25 pounds. There we go, and pray. For that price in Blackpool, Dave's food can't afford to be anything less than perfect. Thank you very much. What was going through somebody's mind putting salmon with strawberries? That can go off the end of the pier. Next. Joe, I used to think it was bad cooking for the mother-in-law. Days clearly out of practice. <sighs> but then, this place is like the Mary Celeste. <clears throat> OK. Just explain what it is, please. OK, we've got medallions of pork on a bed of spring onion mashed potato. The yep. sauce is brie and nectarine, and we have parsnip crisps and accompaniment. Cool paprika. Mm, hot. Mm. Thank you. Okay. Very tough, the pork. It's been battered and beaten heavily. 
you'd struggle to give that to a dog. Bits of parsnip. Rubber. They're supposed to be crisp, by the way. A brie and nectarine sauce. It is fucking disgusting. We'll skip the pudding. Time for a debrief. I just hope Dave and Dawn have got stronger stomachs than I have. OK. We need to talk. OK. I didn't expect it to be that bad, cos everything was rough. Yeah. Trust me, the combination of a hot brie, nectarines and whiskey, that's probably the worst sauce I've ever tasted in my entire life. Overcooked, insepid pork and badly put together. Right, OK, yeah. So, work to do. A lot of work to do. OK. By the way, the mash wasn't bad. Fuck, I'm crying. At least I've been told I'm shit by the best. That's fucking brutal, that was. Mash wasn't bad, though. That's something. How this place ever won anything other than a fucking booby prize, I'll never know. And if there was a rule book, this place would be the classic example on how not to run a fucking restaurant. Starting with rule number one. Don't assume winning an award means people will know who you Excuse are me. and where you are. Um, do you know where Clubway 41 is? It's Black Blackpool's Restaurant of the Year. Nah. No? It's around here, just off the promenade. No, I'm going no? to know. Hello, mate. It's Blackpool's sort of Restaurant of the Year. The hotspot since when? Yeah, this year, in fact. Ladies, have you heard of Clubway 41, a restaurant? <laughs> Nobody seems to have even heard of the place. It's Blackpool's restaurant of the year! Never heard of it. Oh, God! But remarkably, it seems the award really is genuine. I've just found the um, forms for the nomination for the Blackpool Tourism Awards. Some of the best fresh food we've ever eaten. Varied menu catering for most tastes, yeah, I'll say. Taste from a fucking cow's backside to a pig's fucking snort. I would honestly say this has been the best meal I've ever had in my life, honestly, in brackets. A truly unforgettable experience. Well, fuck me, I've had an unforgettable experience. <laughs> Eye catching decor. Someone's pulling my fucking plonker. Yesterday I spent my first day at Clubway 41. Blackpool's failing restaurant of the year. And quite frankly, I don't know where to start. Come on, tomato contro. Come on, pork nectarines. Dave and Dawn have already lost two houses in an effort to stay afloat. And if they're not careful, they'll lose their last remaining lifeline. The downstairs greasy spoon, that's just about keeping their bank manager at bay. I was trying to freeze Mike. It's one of those days where I really just want to be somewhere else today. It's time to bring Dave, Dawn and their food back to the real world. How are you feeling this morning? Totally destroyed. Um, listen, you've got to bounce back. Yeah. I, and I, I'm, I, I ate that food last night and I was honest. I'm fucking, I'm destroyed. Yeah. I've, that's how I feel. I feel like I never want to fucking yeah. cook again. You're a tough cookie. And you're resilient and you've been through the mill before and you know what's good and know what's bad. I'm here to help. And I'm not going until I get it right. Okay, I'll, ta I'll take the fucking shit, yeah. But bounce back. I will. I will. If he thinks that's pressure, well, wakey, wakey, mate. Get a grip, look for your bollocks, and once you've found them, then start using them. He's seen fuck all so far. In order for me to really see what you're like uh, and understand your capabilities, I've got 20 people coming for lunch today. OK? Now. Yep, OK. Um, they've got to be in and out in an hour and a half. They're coming at 2 o'clock. It's been a long time since Dave had 20 customers to cook for, and he's clearly petrified. So I'm hoping to enlist the help of a man who's been coping admirably with pressure since I arrived. Order, table five, make that bar. Nigel, the short order cook in the cafe downstairs. Um, so when you get a rush on, yes. how many orders yeah. come on at once? Uh, well, the cafe could be empty at one stage, then all of a sudden that it can be full. There uh -huh. are 12 tables. And you're on your own? And how many customers have you done in one day, max? What's the, what's the most? You're going about 250, 300, easy. And that's on a good Saturday. Yeah, it's busy. Yes, very much so, yeah. Oh, yeah, very much so. Yeah, the buzz, the adrenaline, is amazing. Two minutes for the breakfast, babe. 
Nigel may spend most of his days cooking bacon butties, but I wouldn't mind betting he's a solid man to have by your side. There you go, on table two, two breakfast, mate. Especially when you're as jittery as Dave is. I've got a problem with the, with the brilliant nectarine sauce. I haven't got any nectarines. Right. Can you know. Well, have you ever tasted it without the nectarines? No. Have you ever tasted it with just a simple gravy? Yes. Finish Brie's. with fresh rosemary. So forget the brie sauce. Right, OK. Yeah, that's fine. As a 46-year-old chef, Dave's naivety is beginning to shock me. Right, I'm going to start off with a quick red wine sauce. Um, but it turns out he's hardly set foot in a kitchen since he trained in the 70s. You don't squash the garlic down if you just put it in no. like that. All I did was just crushed it lightly. Just with the heel of the knife? Exactly that. How not to run a restaurant. Rule number two, never appoint yourself head chef if you can't cook. When we bought this place, to save on money, you know, I took the role of up here, and then Dawn, we know, was perfectly capable of running the restaurant. And so Dawn, where does Dawn, me, where does Dawn get these ideas from? Huh? Vivid imagination. She is, I mean, a lot of the stuff she does come up with, certainly last year, I mean, it worked, and it worked well. You but know, we've got we, no customers. Yeah, I know, well, yeah. So how did it work? Did it well, work for you? Did it work for her? Cos it didn't work for the restaurant? No, yeah, all right. I can't win that argument cos I've got an empty restaurant. So it tastes that. That's where the... That's where the, that's where the flavour is. Don't get, don't get that out of a tin, do you? <laughs> get out. Our 17 customers are local dancers who've hot-footed in here in between shows. They need to be in and out within an hour and a half. The food's prepped and the restaurant's only half full. And with Nigel by his side, Dave should be able to cope. Thank you, sir. I need to see the kitchen under pressure. Mm -hmm. So, um, I know he's your boyfriend, <laughs> yeah? Yeah. But give him some work to do. Bring him on. <laughs> Are you really sure, eh? No, I'd put me three inches of water in the bottom of that, mate. Dealing with several orders at a time is standard practice in the kitchen. So first order on. But within seconds of receiving the first bunch, Dave's flapping about like a headless chicken. Yeah, OK, darling, right, you've just put me four checks in, yeah? Who's in first? OK, yeah, they both came in together. We got both the checks at the same time. Big deal. Oh, fuck. And whilst he's been panicking about the orders, Dave's burnt the custard. It's a criminal lace. Fuck, right. So that's on, that's on the chicken. Do you call out the orders, Dave? Like, sorry? Do you ever call out the orders? Yeah, but, uh, but I mean, I'm, I'm struggling in my own mind at the minute, so... Right. How not to run a restaurant. Rule number three. If you lose all powers of communication under pressure, you shouldn't even be in the kitchen. Nice, can you be doing anything? Dave, you've clammed up. You've talked to him, tell him what you want him to do. I'm not sure, sorry, I'm not sure myself. So... It's your fucking restaurant. I know it's my restaurant. Right, get me a piece of pork. No, it's there, it's there. Dave, you're looking the shit already. I am, yeah. You are. The customers have been here 27 minutes and they still haven't had a sniff of grub. Okay, I'm going to be nearly ready to go in a minute on the first table, yeah? Right, right. thank you. The food has finally started to leave the kitchen. But whether it's edible or not, is another matter. It's depressing. They're cooking for a dining room that's only half full. But for Chloe to survive, it needs to be completely chocker at weekends. Very difficult to keep people placated when you're not going anywhere. Can we not give them all a bang? <laughs> I'll pay. Fuck me, it's been a long time. It's, it's hard, so I'm getting no feedback from Dawn. So I'm, I'm, like, I'm running blind. Running blind at the minute and not having any. What feedback do you need right now? Well, really, is, is everybody okay? Is anyone, worried, you know, starting to sort of like whinge because they're waiting or it's just like. Relax, just relax. Just you're it's... all over the shop like a fucking orangutan. Aren't you? If you cool down and just relax and get yourself composed, I think yeah, you'll do a ton just... better job. Yeah, yeah, I know. No? Yeah, you're right, yeah, yeah. Without getting paranoid. Yeah. Our guests have to leave in 15 minutes and they haven't even started on desserts yet. You've got a turn left, yeah? Yes, you've got the first they've got, table, right, table two, two moves, one ready, one pudding, have I got it? Yeah, you got right, it. Right, table seven, four moves, have I got it? Yeah. Right, right, right. <sighs> Restaurant of the year, Blackpool. Yeah, shithole of the year. Um, 
Yeah, making hard work and nothing really. All over the place, uh, completely disorientated in his own kitchen, very bad at delegation, and totally in a mess. I can't think of two things at once. 17 guests. That's all. It took him one hour and five minutes to cook for ten people, and the last seven guests have taken 45 minutes. Shocking. So you want three first, one bananas, what yeah, are you going to have? Yeah, well, I was asking you. Okay, that's fine. Right. Tell me that in the first place. I'm fucking answer. Don't have fucking answers to get. Oh dear, oh dear. It's a spare room again tonight. It's the end of the season for Blackpool. Tomorrow night, the illuminations will be switched off and the tourists will go home. From what I've seen so far, it will be a miracle if Clubway 41 survives the winter. Right, Dave. Stop cooking like a ray of time. Stop lunking around. And bananas are off the menu. Thank you very much. Thank you. By day three, it's clear in my mind that there's only one way forward. Simplify the food and simplify the preparation. But first, I want to give Dave and Nigel senses a wake-up call. Get those on. <laughs> yeah. Up. Got to really rely on your taste buds. Now, how not to run a restaurant. Rule number four. If your chefs can't distinguish between heavenly and hellish food combinations, yeah. then your customers won't be coming back for more. Dave, what can you taste there? Uh, no, uh, baz basil. What about something meaty? It's like very rare beef. Yeah. Watch my fingers, please. Remember this one? Dave's signature dish. Even my six-year-old daughter would know this is a culinary calamity. Dave, talk to me about that one. What, what flavours can you identify straight away? Cheese. Yeah. Pineapple? Yeah, pineapple cheese. Think what it is. Is it like a shellfish? Which... Like a scallop. When you brush your teeth in the morning, do you use toothpaste or cigarettes? Because you've got a mouth like a cow's backside. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Good. Olive, tomato. Do those flavours work together? Yeah, they do. Yeah. They definitely work together. Yeah. One of my favourites. Yeah. Ready for the last one? The evil salmon and strawberry starter. Open wide. That Dave swears is so popular mm -hmm. on his menu. Mm -hmm. First of all, nice. Would you be happy to pay money for that? No, not this. No. On that one, I, I wouldn't. Not to my taste. No. It doesn't work for me. It doesn't ne work for me. Nectarine and pork. OK, take the fucking blindfolds off. That last mm -hmm. stick had your salmon and strawberries salmon? and fucking Fuck watercress on there. Yes? Yeah. Now, if it doesn't work in your fucking palate, what chance has it got working in a restaurant? Yeah. Point taken? Very much so. Very, uh, yeah. very constructive, that. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Now, I need Fuck. to be sure the creative mastermind behind Clubway's yeah. disastrous current menu isn't about to sabotage a painfully slow progress. My question is, what gives you the right to think of these ideas and then, in your own mind, think that it's right for the customers mm. when you haven't seen it before? Just experiment, really. Just uh -huh. try and put different flavours together. We, we've tried, because we've tried so many menus, yep. and to try and fill the restaurant, we have done plain, and then we've gone the avenue, well, maybe um, we are too plain and people can make this at home. And unfortunately, it's not working? No. I mean, until you've actually put it as plainly as you have done yesterday and today and actually gone through, there's yeah. too many flavours going on. Because the business is disintegrated mm -hmm. and there's no customers, mm -hmm. you're digging deep. Mm -hmm. But you're lively, you're a live wire, and that's a healthy <laughs> sign in a business. You know, it, it, it needs that energy. But I think what you've got to really understand, what you're telling Dave to do, he's not capable of doing. All right, OK. The restaurant is empty and the next stage is to close it. Mm -hmm. We're not going to close it. No. We're going to look at clever simple combinations, mm -hmm. put them back on the menu okay. and get back to something that sounds in touch with Blackpool. Okay. Clubway's food isn't just unappetising. It's packed with costly, out-of-season ingredients that reflect in its overpriced menu. I could use anything on it, didn't I? I've decided to challenge Dave's perception of simplicity by giving him a tray full of ingredients to make a broccoli soup. He can use as many or as few as he sees fit but it's got to be good. OK, is it finished? Yeah. 
Dat wil het taste. Zo is het taste broccoli. I can taste little bits of broccoli. Taste the bits, but you can't taste the flavour. You can't taste the flavour, yeah. exactly. Water onto the boil. My recipe consists of broccoli. Yeah. And broccoli. And broccoli. And broccoli. And broccoli. Boiling rapidly. Because I can't believe it's that simple. I'm sorry. Because once we've cooked the broccoli in that water, we're then going to strain it. Yeah. And add the water back to the broccoli. On. Dave's simple broccoli soup contains 16 ingredients, including pricey cream and butter. Mine is just three. Broccoli, salt and water. It costs pence and it took a lot less time to make. How it taste? I love the colour. What's the first thing that comes into your mind? God, that is so tasty, a broccoli. It's all you taste. And it gives me that sense of, Christ, that's Moorish, I want more, because mm, it tastes of broccoli. I understand. And the next one? Can we taste that one? Dave likes it, but what about his missus? Which one would you pay for? I don't like either. You don't like either? No. Fucking hell. That's too plain and that's yeah. too... From now on, you're staying out of the kitchen. Okay. Yeah. Nothing to do with your food. <laughs> yeah. Nothing to do with any tangerine, nectarine, yeah, fucking yeah, no mango. Problem. Yes. I'm never going to look at one ever again. No. Fantastic. <laughs> Dave, you're now in control of your kitchen. Thank you. OK. okay. Fuck off. <laughs> Thank you. How not to run a restaurant. Rule number five. Don't give your establishment a name that makes it sound like a strip joint. Subway 41, first floor restaurant, licensed cafe restaurant. Fucking hell. Gotta think of a name. Something positive, something that rings. What's your surname? Mine, Brindley. Brindley's. Brindley's Bistro Cafe. Mm. What's your surname? Jackson. Yeah. Jackson sounds good. Mm -hmm. And it's. Jackson. Mm. Enough to marry me, babe, aren't you? So I'm a Jackson too. Ah, <laughs> even more pressure now. <laughs> Everything costs me money. Uh, are you it? proposing? Isn't it your job to propose? <laughs> it's the love of my life. So, so there you go. We'll take oh, a day off. Easy. <laughs> take a day off and I'll marry you. So long as it's on the cards, then. Yeah. 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 I'm happy okay, with that. Good. I'll go with Jacksons. That. Yeah, we'll Jacksons. go with that. We got you it. sure now? Very. Yeah. And are you settled on that? One hundred. One hundred. One hundred percent. The nectarine fog that's been surrounding Dave appears finally to be lifting. Are you in touch with Blackpool? What's all the chefs using at the moment? What's the, what's the latest big thing? What's caught locally? What's from the fish market? What's down the veg market? No, then I'd have to put hand on heart and say no. No, because I'd rely on my suppliers. Yeah. We've lost direction. It's gone badly wrong. Um, you've got to keep your ear close to the ground. So what do you want from Blackpool? I want people to come and have good, honest, Food. Uh huh. That's it, in that shop. That's what I want. And how far are you away from that now? Miles. Probably further than we are from the restaurant now. It takes a brave man to acknowledge his business is on the brink of collapse, but I've not given up hope on Dave yet. We've hit rock bottom. Yeah, we've hit rock bottom. Now we're going up. And if you can't stand the heat, fuck off out of the kitchen. Fuck off out of the kitchen. Hold on tight. I'm fucking holding on. Oh, shit! Fuck you now. Really pleased to see the back of that. Yes. It's my fourth day in Blackpool, and it's restaurant of the year, Clubway 41, is no longer. Yeah, look, 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 all coming down. Fantastic. From today, this place will be known simply as Jackson's. Down. Can you get that fucking banner down as well, please? Yeah, we'll give that back to the tourist board. But even with a facelift, we're still breaking a cardinal rule in how not to run a restaurant. What's the fucking name? Rule number six. First floor establishments are notoriously difficult to fill. So to give Dave and Dawn's new venture a fighting chance, I've come up with a radical idea. I think you're missing a real serious trick here. This cafe functions brilliantly during the day. And I think we should look at moving the restaurant and operating the restaurant from here in the evening. But I stood outside last night and I looked and I thought, God, that frontage. Restaurants would die for that kind of frontage out there. It's not utilised, is it, really? No, it's no. not. No. Yeah, the kitchen's on show, yeah. there's an atmosphere going on, there's a bit of banter. Yeah, you've got all the bus stops, all the locals going home. Yeah. yeah. When someone walks past that and they see this place full, what are they going to do? Want to eat they want to come in and eat. It is a nice room to work, and plus, no buzzers, no phone. I can see David. 
it's one on one, they can see him, and it's more of a, a partnership for the two of us then. The customers are coming in and seeing us both in our environment, not Dave stuck in the kitchen and popping down when he can. So, can't pour a jug of milk over his head down here, but we have got a cellar, haven't we? Tomorrow night, we've invited 50 influential people to launch the new name. And to match its fresh, clean exterior, we've come up with a fresh, clean, simple menu. Have you made a castle before? No. No. You never made a castle before? No, never. No. Fuck me. 47 30, years ago. 30 years ago, probably at Catering College. It's right. time to nail rule number seven. Don't attempt to cook elaborate food yeah. before you've mastered the very basics. We'll start off with just roasting off the vegetables. Right. And then we'll brown the meat, put it all into a pot, and let it cook nice and slow for about an hour and a half. I've got just 36 hours to teach Jackson's inept head chef how to cook. Nigel, yes. you're doing the potatoes? Yes. Once they're finished, we're going to make a fish stock. Right. Yeah? Okay. That's going to be our base for fish soup. Lamb, we need to colour it off. See? Look how dark it is. That there is, is all, all, all about flavour there. That whole thing there is just pure flavour. Using inexpensive produce fresh from the local markets, 90% of this new food can be prepared in advance. Dishes like lamb casserole, pork terrine and fish soup are designed to take the heat off during service. That's it, nicely mixed. Good. The aim is to get Dave and Nigel sending out delicious, tasty food to a dining room full of customers, without Dave having a nervous breakdown in the process. You're free. You're free to control it and do it properly without having to do 20 things at once. Yeah, I understand. Next up, we're prepping some locally caught fish for a deliciously simple soup. Right, Gordon, just give me a hand here, will you, please? Yeah. See the knife? Yeah. Then watch it all the way down to the tail. Yeah. Out. Straight off. Right, eyes out. Yep, and just cut it up into quarters. Any specific way or just...? Well, it's only for a fish stock, Dave, so whatever way you feel fit. OK. This is like pulling teeth. Anyone that hasn't actually been cooked a casserole before, yeah, or filleted fish, shouldn't be rolling a fucking restaurant. So let's get cracking on with the fish soup. Cook off your mussels, and we'll save the juice, yeah? Have you cooked mussels before? No. You're pulling my plonker now, aren't you? You've never cooked a mussel? All right, we can shout or you can fucking help. I don't mind. What do you mean I can help? Hey, what have we been doing for the last... Yeah, OK, fine, you're right. I'm sorry. What have we been okay. doing for the last two hours? Fine, so what do we want in here? I'm just amazed you've never cooked a mussel. I haven't. Don't take the piss out of me for it, though. I mean, who's taking the piss? You are. I don't think you can actually cook. If you'd have fucking talked to me... If you can't me, cook a no, fucking mussel... you had fucking yes. talked to you... Yeah! Go on. Hey? Go on. Yeah? Uh -huh. Finish it, then. Finish what? What are you about to are say? You? What am I about to say? Cook a mussel. No, I haven't cooked one. Right. OK. Right. So, shall I show you how to cook a mussel? Oh, at last. Thank you. Yes, oh. please. Right. Are you going to tone your voice down or are yes. you going to shout like some dick? I'll shout like some dick and then I'll calm down. Right. Now I've shouted, well, I will calm down. Why don't you fuck off to the bookshop, read how to cook a mussel and come back and see me? Yeah, okay. And I'll run your fucking restaurant. Thank you. Plonker. Twat. <laughs> fucking hell. What's all that about? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, at least we broke the ice now, anyway. We know where we stand. Yeah. yeah. Five minutes after he put his toys back in his pram, Dave returned, ready and willing to learn how to cook mussels. All we're doing is steaming them now. Not quite. We've done more in the last fucking hour than we have in three days, yeah? Yeah. I know more about you and you know more about fucking me, yes? True, Chef. Thank you. Gordon. Gordon. Fuck the Chef. Yeah. Rule number eight. Don't assume you can run a restaurant just because you've worked in one. Sometimes, you know, when I listen to you talk about food and the way you are in a kitchen, I'm concerned that you fall in love with becoming a great chef, but forgot to go through the journey to get there. What do you mean by a great chef? I mean, to reach... A good cook. Your, your no, 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 fuck all to do with me. You're not working for someone else now. You're working for yourself. And, you know, this is on his ass. Yeah. The business can't get any worse. I just don't want you to get in a situation where you think that you're going to be Blackpool's best chef, because for as long as you've got a hole on your ass, that's never going to happen. All right. Dave and Dawn would be better off with a new chef, but they simply can't afford one right now. So there he is. <laughs> Mookie the Clown has agreed to try and work some miracles with what we've got. Now, that man's got amazing coordination skills. That's good, that's good. Yeah. That's it, slow, right? Yeah. That's brilliant, that's brilliant. Okay. Leading that's a successful kitchen, takes tremendous concentration. 
this. So all we're doing really is creating that momentum, aren't we? You've got to constantly be thinking ahead to keep on top of the game. Just like being in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah, and creating that momentum with great coordination skills. A table three, table four together. Putting two tables together. Yeah. Sending three tables together. There we go. Now we have to take them off. Oh. Oops. Oh, it may be a crash course in controlling his kitchen, but at last yeah, something seems great. to be sinking in. This one needs to be. Come on, Dave. You can do this. See? Put two hands like that. One. That's it. Thank you very much. Take your bow. <laughs> With the launch of Jackson's restaurant just 12 hours away, its new downstairs venue is being treated to a facelift. It's goodbye to the old clinical cafe and hello to a warm and inviting restaurant. What a difference. Huh? Brilliant, isn't it? It looks absolutely amazing. It really does. It looks absolutely smashing there. Very nice. There's loads to do. Food for the new simplified menu needs to be prepared, practiced, we'll waste nothing, and perfected. Same amount from the bottom, same amount from the top. Two and a half minutes each side. I never thought of having a roast side. Never in a million years. Okay. And just to make sure, we're instigating idiot-proof measures. Down. Take the air out. <sighs> okay. One nice portion. So, water's boiling rapidly. It goes in. You cut the top off, and it's away. It couldn't be easier. But a restaurant's first night is everything, and the team can't afford to put a foot wrong. David, it's your restaurant. No, yeah, I'm big happy night. With that. Is there anything you think that you can't do? No, nothing. Anything you want to change? No, I'm happy with it. Lamb casserole. Bring it back to the boil, middle of the plate, meat in the middle, mm -hmm. dumplings on the side. Mm -hmm. Push and pushing in here. Push, 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 push. Question, question, question. Running through your mind. Then it becomes fluent, fluid, happy fucking customers, full dining room, and everything moves. OK? OK. The newly incarnated Jackson's has got to be a slick operation. Jackson's, that looks nice. Two courses, £14, three courses, £18. Uh, Darren, that doesn't sound expensive, does it? Two courses, £14, three courses, £18. Cheap, that. Looks nice. Hey, welcome to Jackson's. Nice, new, immaculate hats, proper hats. Just do me a favour, you look the part, cook the part. Good luck, everyone. Thank you very much. Stay cool, stay calm. Yes, and communicate. Oh, our first customers. Hey, guys. Our first customers. Yes, you are. Good evening. It's nice Good to meet you. Nice Welcome to meet. Jackson's. Right. Ladies from the tourist board, don't mention the banner. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I feel like I'm just about to light the fuse and let it explode. It's a huge gamble putting Dave and his nerves on show. But maybe an audience is exactly what he needs to focus. That's what's happening. Nice, nice, buzzy restaurant. We'll keep it that way, yes? Here we go. One check on, please. OK, one mackerel salad, one soup, one lamb, one steak. Dave's off to a good start. How long, please, Nigel? Uh, two minutes. Good. OK. David. Yeah. That's good. Plenty of talking, yes? He's got a confidence about him I haven't seen before. And he appears to be in control. Thank you. Service, please. Table two, two tart, one mackerel. Okay. Got table two's mackerel and pate. And that wait for bread. Your bread. Okay, I'm going to go with table ten mains, then table seven starters. First main course now. First main course Good. now. Table ten. Let's go. Service, please. Mains and wait. Table ten. The plates are spinning, but will Dave be able to keep them up? Come on, guys. Okay. Nice season. Nigel's been as clear and concise with his steaks as he is with his bacon and eggs. One steak, medium. One steak, medium well. Medium well, darling. Medium. OK, Good. table two. OK, table two gone, Dave. Thank you. OK, service, please. Table one, one pate, one tart. Thank you. Check, please. Even in its heyday, this place has never been so busy. Thank you. Service, please. Table five, two soup. And there's nothing more alluring to potential customers than an attractive, buzzing restaurant. There's nothing difficult here. Soup to reheat, everything's cooked. Even the potatoes are cooked. All they have to do is dress the salad, grill the mackerel, put it onto a plate. Got anything else? Was it table? That was table. What have you just sent, Nigel? Five? Sorry? Say the fish to yours? Yeah, I've got done. Yeah. Don't forget your lemon. But 50 minutes in, 
and the kitchen's having trouble keeping pace. Okay, I'll start with Dave. Right, now what I'm doing now, Dave. Right, uh, we'll go for we'll these starters. Sorry, first. Those plates are beginning to wobble. David, don't burn any of that mackerel. We need everything that's on order now, you know. Sorry. Don't burn that mackerel. I won't be here next week. So Dave and Nigel have got to prove to each other they can do this on their own. Okay, hey, Dave, what stars are coming now, please? Okay, I'm doing now table nine starters. Okay. And then we'll all the rest will just come out together, yeah? Uh, okay. Dawn, can we serve some more champagne for those people that haven't got starters? Or some wine or something? Yeah. To keep, just keep them happy. Well, it got off to a great start, and now it's gone really pear-shaped because there's actually six tables waiting for the starters. I need seven and six next, but I need the starters on eight. Mikey! Mikey, I need some pans, mate, please. And you've got a steak well done. I've only got one steak Dave, left. you're here. Yeah, I've only got one steak left. Oh, I did say that. Dave's plates are no longer wobbling. They're crashing down around him. I, need that I haven't got the steak. I can do the pen, eh? An hour after they ordered, Customers are being told their choice of main course is no longer available. And we need these customers back. I've had the starters yet. So already we've gone back to the table and said we've got no steak. So how long for those starters, Dave? 11 and 12. Okay, let's do it. They should be ordered between 11 and 12. Okay, fine. Watch those steaks. That's all we've got left. You know that. Two medium well, please. Okay. Okay. Despite all the delays, Dawn's waiting team have managed to keep the customers happy. They gave us an extra glass of champagne, that was lovely. That's made our night. A little bit tipsy now, but we're all right. <laughs> Table nine, please. The food has looked a hell of a lot better. The mackerel starter was beautiful. I really enjoyed that. We've had a wonderful evening, and, and the food, well, um, if it's all around my mouth, I'm sorry. <laughs> Even more miraculously, Dave has got through it. Okay, service, please. Without having a nervous breakdown. Done. Done. Dusty. Bye. Well, mate. It's not perfect by a long chalk, but they've come a hell of a long way in a week. The following morning, Dave and Dawn have had a booking for ten, based on a recommendation from last night. You can't get better feedback than that. Morning. Morning, Gordon. How are you, well? Morning, Hi. Dawn. You well? Hi, thank you. There's a present. Um, I want it for you. You want it for me? Yeah. Hey. It's a Is it a coordination challenge? It's a ring Was it? Yeah, keep it as a good luck mascot. Nigel, how are you feeling? Yeah, very well. We yeah. had a positive about last night, actually. It's just sort of like, you know, give us another two, three services. Uh, and uh, we're a bit top notch. It's not until you work something that you find it's pitfalls. So, and now we worked it, and we saw the pitfalls, yep. so now we know which areas to look in. Dawn's sparkle and energy are perfect for front of house. I just need to be sure she'll steer well clear of that menu. Last night I stood outside and just looked and saw the restaurant full. <laughs> you were busy and buzzing. It was great. And feeding off the customers and bouncing off them. It's the base now, the start for something that we think is going to really take off. Yeah. My concerns with David is I don't want him getting beyond his station again. Yeah. I don't want you filling his head with brie. No, believe me, it's never going to happen again. No. I've listened to you, no menus. Yeah. This is my bit, that's his yeah, bit, absolutely. no menus. Last night worked, and you so know it fucking works like that. Nothing more. I want you to keep hold of that. It was nice to see it buzzing again. It was simple. It's all about organisation. Yeah, but don't get too ambitious, and certainly don't turn it into something pretentious, because that isn't going to close this place. I know money's tight and finances are difficult. In time, I want you to look for a new chef. That's crucial. Good. Yeah, I agree with that. One more thing. Keep the fucking nectarines <laughs> in the fruit salad. Yeah? <laughs> Keep the nectarines in the fruit salad. <laughs> yes? Not with fucking battered out pork. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Yeah. Look after that lady. I will do. Bye, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Drive carefully, please. Thank you. Damn, I forgot to mention rule nine. You're only as good as your last service. Eight months ago, I came to Blackpool on a mission to breathe some life 
back into his failing restaurant of the year. Right, table two, two moves, one bread and butter pudding, have I got it? But a quick resuscitation for Club A41 was out of the question. That's probably the worst sauce I've ever tasted in my entire life. They were breaking every rule in the book. I don't think you can actually cook. If you're the fucking chalk, if you can't cook a uh, fucking muscle, you, the fucking yeah. chalk, you do it. Uh, get rid of the fucking name. But after a week, we'd moved heaven and earth to make the new Jacksons a going concern. Table one, one pate, one tart. And by the skin of our teeth, we just about pulled it off. They gave us an extra glass of champagne. That was lovely. That's made our night. I left Dawn and Dave at the end of Blackpool's season, with a chance of surviving a long, bleak winter. Summer's here, and they're still open. How are you? Hello. Hello. Thank you all right? Yeah, very well, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, well. On the surface, say... the place is looking great. Yeah, just give me an heart attack then. Oh, please. <laughs> but it's soon clear that things are far from rosy. No. And where's uh, Nigel? Well, Nigel's gone because... No, just gone because I think it's probably best on the death like that. You're missing a chef. God. Things must be bad. I was hoping Dave was going to recruit reinforcements in the kitchen, not get rid of them. So getting through the winter was the most important thing, which yes. you managed to do. Yeah. I mean, we knew winter would be hard, but we didn't. I didn't think it would be that hard. All the way through January, February, we no, carried no. on nothing, and then we ended up with this bus station right outside. We can't have the doors open in the summer because the, the fumes, the diesel fumes, are disgusting. This is a terrible twist of fate. They've just about survived the winter, and now a bus exchange has landed on their doorstep. Apart from physically drag these people into the building, I really don't know what more we can do. I mean, we've worked our asses off all year. With debts at an all-time high, Dave and Dawn shut down the evening restaurant just two months after Jackson's relaunch. It just seems a, a missed opportunity if you bin that idea so early when you, you worked at it for six, seven weeks. If I hadn't have done it and, and cut my costs, we wouldn't be here now, literally. In a desperate effort to save money in the cafe, they've shot themselves in the foot by ousting home-cooked food. They're back to bog-standard frozen Blackpool fare. Yeah. So just cafe food? You're just, putting yeah. this breakfast? Yeah. So what about the specials? The specials, well, they've been up there. I mean, we just have the board up there now. If summer trade doesn't pick up soon, Dave and Dawn will lose everything. Have you thought about you have to speculate to accumulate? Yeah, yeah, of course they piss you off, but turn it round to your advantage. So I've come up with a unique marketing strategy, using the god-awful buses to bring fresh food and customers back to Jackson's Cafe. The idea is attract them into the restaurant in the evening and the kids eat for free. For free. Yeah. As an incentive through the summer 2005. And, you know, look, delicious home-cooked evening specials after 6 p.m. Yeah, very good idea. Are you happy? I'm happy with that, yeah. Thanks yeah. Well for that. So, for our summertime special, it's fresh fish and chips for mum and dad and free homemade chicken nuggets and mini burgers for the kids. Yeah. So, they're not coming to us. Fuck it. We're going to go to them. We're doing some homemade specials this evening. Um, if you order a special, little girl will leave for free. Everything's homemade. So we'll see you in about, what, half an hour? That's probably you. Around, around the, corner. the corner. Jackson's on Market Street. Right. See you there, yes? Thank you. Bye. <laughs> on the adult special, we've got Fleetwood fresh caught fish, beer batter. You like burgers, don't you, big boy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Give me five. <laughs> You're too slow. Yeah. Yeah. At last, a smile. Dawn's a natural saleswoman, so why isn't she out here every evening? Everything's homemade on the premises, fresh today, fantastic produce, and we start at six o'clock this evening. What's your favourite food? What do you like? Curry. <laughs> Curry's off the menu. Start about six o'clock. Right, Thank, Thank you. The past eight months have clearly been very hard, but to survive, you can't let it get you down. Uh, you know, the place is better than the cafe. I think yes. that's my, you know, that's my my my, my gripe. There must be a, a 500 cafes that serve full English mm. breakfast in Blackpool. And if it's got any chance of surviving, you know, you've got to be better than that. Mm. You're fucking on the arse like that, and the business is so fucking weak. We've got no choice, have we? Huh? Oh, don't be upset. No, I'm all right. No, don't be silly. Come here. Come on. Don't be silly. Huh? Sorry. Don't be silly. There you go. You've got to be strong. Uh -huh. Should get back and cook some goujons? Yes. Yeah? Or do you fancy a swim? <laughs> Not a sniff. Well, you're already, you're already wet. <laughs> huh? Standing in the fucking swimming pool. Let's get back to the restaurant. <laughs> Tonight's a chance to lift the bar. 
and convince the punters that Jackson's home-cooked fresh food is a cut above the rest. Are you set up for uh, for dinner? I'm just about, yeah, I've just got these. But Dave and Dawn have go got to stick to their guns. I was a little bit miffed this morning when I heard that it only went for six weeks. That's not long enough to try it. And I think what you're doing is listening to the first or second customer and then that's setting your thoughts for the next three or four months. I, I really had to look at the cost, big style, yeah. you know, at the end of the January. Now the season's here, we have the chance to evolve it yeah. in these over the next sort of like 12 mm -hmm. to 14 weeks. Yeah. But you've got to make a noise, Dave. This is. Uh, you know, a cafe, it's a smart place, but you've got to get that message across and you've got to continue putting that message out there. Our PR exercise has paid off. The customers are flocking in. Two minutes for your garnish. That's fine, thank you. Dave's at home cooking this kind of food and it's flying out. OK, I need four goujons out, please. And the home cooking seems to be hitting the spot. Dave is nice. Oh, Mm. It's nice, crispy batter, very tasty. And the cod. Mm, that's delicious. You can do it. This is simple. I might actually ask them for the fucking recipe. Charles Burger, Charles Burger, no chips, okay? Well, I'm convinced. How about the kids? Where's it gone? Have you eaten it all? Well done. <laughs> Out of ten, how many would you mark it? So that means it was a really good burger. The meal deal's been a real success, and the fresh food has proved its worth. The food was 100 times better. Customers were happy, weren't they? Yeah. Huh? Quite Kids were in there. Mm -hmm. We had to go off the street and drag them in, but you know, that's what's going to take to get this place back. Yeah. Great, honest food. That will fill a restaurant. Yeah. Right. yeah. I really do. Yeah. 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 And Thank it, you. It's not that difficult, yeah. is it? No. Uh -huh. No. This is a rule book, because when I first came to Jackson's, or Clubway at the time, yeah, it was everything a restaurant shouldn't be. Read this. There's one special rule. Rule number 10, don't think your life saves into opening a restaurant if you're in any doubt of success. If I asked you to turn the clock back two years, would you have bought Clubway 41? Knowing what I know now? Yeah. No. But hindsight's always an exact science. Mm -hmm. But with what we've learned, we will carry on. And it will work. Look what you've been through. Yeah. Don't bin it. Read me the rule before I go. My lucky number, number seven. Don't attempt to cook elaborate food before you've mastered the basics. And that is one thing we definitely learned from your last visit. Yeah. Good. Sound advice, though. Sound advice. Lovely. Bedtime reading tonight. Bedtime Thank you. reading, big time. Hey. Good night. Good to see you. And you? Yes? Yeah. No, I'll get you a kiss. Dave and Dawn have been through the mill. But if they can stay focused for the rest of the season, they might just be here next year. Do you actually get a shot? You don't get a shot, no. This is where David needs to sit inside so we can wake him up and get his numb fuck head out of his brie and nectarines and get back to some good honest food. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't fuck out. This week, I'm in Derby for my biggest challenge yet. A god-awful Italian restaurant that's stuck in a time war. It sounds like prices that were in existence fucking 10, 15 years ago. A truly miserable kitchen. I've been saying it for three days, we haven't got a pot washer. Nobody's done a fucking thing about it. With appalling food. The chicken's raw, and I don't want to catch salmonella in fucking Derby. Unless I can help, her new owner, Daniela, has just spent half a million quid on a sinking ship. Oh, we might as well close down now and I can save my money. When the gondola opened in 1968, its Italian owners brought the glamour of Venice to Dowdy Derby. And it instantly became the place to be seen. You couldn't get into this place unless you booked two or three weeks in advance. The place was packed, had wonderful atmosphere, and it had a reputation then of being the best restaurant in Derby. Daniela celebrated her 21st birthday at La Gondola. She even got married in the restaurant. She loves it so much, six months ago, she bought the company. But just what had she bought? Oh, fucking hell. Marbella in Derby, fucking hell. The size of it. A 125-seater restaurant with a 21-bedroom hotel attached. 
a big undertaking, especially Shit. if the state of the outside is anything to go by. Fuck me, even the gondola looks fucked. Hello. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Ransley. Gordon. Gordon. And? Daniela. Daniela, how are you? Fine. <laughs> well, Good. for seeing you. Uh, Thank you for coming to uh, Not at all. God, it's a, uh, it's, uh, it's like going back in time. It is. It's a bit of a time warp. Um, how old is it? Um, nearly 40 years old. Really? Even the floorboards are... I know, creaky. Creaking as well. Fantastic. Anyone under there? Uh, no, there's the wine cellar around. Oh, okay. My lovely old wine, so yes. Fantastic. We it's Friday night, 8 o'clock, and I can hear a few clinking plates in there, but um, the place sounds empty. How many look for dinner? Four. Four? Yes, a table of four, and that's all. And that is our problem. We have this beautiful restaurant, and it's empty most of the time. One question I've got to ask. Why the hell did you buy it if you've never run a restaurant or a hotel before? Well, when my mother died and I went through a divorce, it was the one thing one night that kept me going. And I just thought, that's what I'll do. I'll buy La Gondra. And mm. all night long, I just dreamt of this place. Oh, some customers coming now. Sorry. OK. Yep. Good night. Good night. Good night. Did you enjoy dinner? Yes, thanks. Excellent. Yes. Damn, I think they left their teeth on the table. From its 70s chandeliers to its plastic flowers, the restaurant is well and truly past it. It's like stepping back in time, isn't it? It is. And I wondered whether, should we really decorate it or wait till the fashion turns and come back to it? I mean... But it'll be too late if the business goes down the pan first. Everywhere you look, um, it's like a flashback to the 70s. Even the food sounds, you know, that dated. Smoked salmon, honeydew melon with port, warm brie with a tomato tart. The menu is massive, nearly 100 dishes, and very few of them actually Italian. Um, I'd like to start with the um, spaghetti bolognese, please. Spaghetti bolognese. Because yeah, the food's <gasps> Italian. Yes. So it's fresh spaghetti. It is. Thank you. I've ordered the simplest starter on the menu, but it seems to be taking a very long time. Get him on some fucking proper spaghetti now. He's going to give the fucking ancient shit that was in there. Gareth, 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 you, you do it. Don't worry. Yeah. The problem in the kitchen. That's that's been pretty good to order, so. Oh, love. Nice, thank you. He apologised about the wait because he said the pasta was cooked to order, which if you only got four <laughs> customers in the evening, fucking right, it's going to be cooked to order. Big portions for a starter. Six pound fifty is huge. I'm mounting a spag bowl and a salmon main course to come. All for six pounds fifty. No wonder they're losing money. Right, right. Gareth, see if you can get a tin of lobster soup open without me seeing you. I've just seen something very dodgy. The silver serving vegetables, and even in 1999, silver service of vegetables like that was 25 years too late. Thank you. The salmon is also oh, massive, good. and like the restaurant, a bewildering trip through time. As the years have progressed, you've just added more on to it. <laughs> oh, fuck it. It's 1975, let's stick a muscle on there. Ah, oh, fuck it. It's 1980, let's stick some Monge 2 on there. Do you know what? It's 1985, Ratatouille's in, stick some Ratatouille on there. And it's 1990, welcome back, the roast spud. Quantity, not quality. A classic 1970s mistake. And surprise, surprise, How are you? head chef Steve right. Strawn nice started here in 1975. Good, good, good. I've never seen mm. such massive portions in my entire life. Right. Doesn't need the prawns, doesn't need the um, mussels. It's described on the menu as that, so yep. I've, I've got to follow through with what's on the menu. But I mean, you've been here for that length of time, you could change that and just do a simple poached salmon dish without all I that. I could do, I could do. Yeah. You know, there's two ways in this industry. You move with the times, mm -hmm. or the times moves you, and unfortunately, You've been caught in a time warm. In my experience, when a restaurant's been stuck in a rut for so long, rot starts setting in. Staff get really lazy, they start cutting corners, and they really need to discover exactly what's going on here. Today, there's a 70th birthday party in the restaurant. 
Functions are the lifeblood of Lagonda, but there's not even enough of those to stop it dying on its arse. At the moment, for this year, I've got nine weddings booked, but really, we should be aiming for about 30 weddings a year, and then that would be very nice. With 25 covers, it's a chance for me to see how the kitchen copes when they have more than four people through the door. I've done four or four. Mm -hmm. Ten minutes in, the kitchen's already in trouble. They've run out of fresh tuna steaks. You know what you're going to have to do? Plan B. Fuck knows what they're going to do. It's called Plan B. Do you know about Plan B? Plan B. No. Plan B. Plan B. No. No, I don't. Uh, what's Plan B when he's at home? Oh, tins. That's what it means. Right. Tin tuna, banged out on limp lettuce. My gran would have been ashamed to have served that. It doesn't feel like a kitchen. No energy, no excitement, no... Passion, really, and sort of care. And love for food. Just get in the bowl and fuck off out of here. Excuse me, sweet up. Now, there's a problem with the mains. Oh, sorry, it's no sauce? I'm oh, sorry. no sauce. All, all plain. All plain, yeah. Where does it say plain on there? It doesn't. Oh, I don't know what I can do about that. Steve's straight on the phone to Stella, the business manager. Yeah, but it doesn't say plain on the menu, does it? We, we never serve it plain. Chef's wrong again. Never the office. Not really. Sort it out on Monday. It would have said lobster sauce if you wanted lobster sauce. Stella cocked up the order for the lobster sauce. But instead of rolling his sleeves up and getting on with it, Steve picks a fight. Are you going upstairs, Stella? You just asked Danielle to come wash some pots, that's all. Why haven't you got a pot washer? I've been saying it for three days, we haven't got a pot washer. Nobody's done a fucking thing well, about you're it. You're in charge of the kitchen, Steve. It's your department. You yeah, should see Dan. You wash your hands of it, then. While they're all bickering, the waiters are still serving the main course. It's a shambles. La Gondola wants to be a high-class restaurant, and yet, they're slopping out reheated catering rubbish. Belgium apple pie. What's Belgium about it? Did you buy them in? Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But from a chef well, to chef's point of view, you yeah, know damn well yeah. an apple pie. Oh, yeah. We, we, we exactly. can do it with our eyes closed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you're telling me now that you're happier to buy them in rather than make them? At this moment. No, I'm, I'm happier to make myself, but right. I don't have the staff or the skills or the time to do okay. it. Okay. How long does it take to make I mean, an apple pie? Half an hour, 40 minutes. Yeah. Microwave in? Yeah, yeah. What this guy needs is a rocket up his ass. This is a fucking double for you, isn't it? Yep. It's not exactly ball breaking here, is it? It has been in the past, and it can no, be. It can't, yes, stop going it, back. It, talk it, today. I mean, it's almost like we're no, paying for your memories no, again. Today is quiet. Right. Bring it back. I'll still handle it. Fucking hell. OK. Daniela sunk half a million quid of her divorce settlement into La Gondola. But last year alone, it lost 75 grand. If she doesn't open her eyes to what's happening in her kitchen, she'll be left with nothing but memories and debts. Let's be brutally honest. You fell in love with the place and you grew up in it and you had your 21st birthday party, you had your wedding here, and you have bought a fucking time bomb. I've never seen a kitchen like that that just has so little atmosphere, no um, banter, no communication, no vibrant, let's get ready for a, a great lunch. It was um, turkey going in, cooked the day before, reheated. Um, I'm horrified that we had that. If you're telling me a discerning customer cannot tell the yeah. difference. But I think we've really got to pick up on and wake up on is the fact that your chef can lose his self-esteem by serving that shit. They've carved a very comfortable niche out for themselves and they've made a really comfortable bed to lie in and unfortunately you're paying the price for that. I'm pretty pissed off, you know that. I'm not happy because what I saw yesterday across the board I thought was a fucking disgrace. La Gondola in Derby. At first I thought this restaurant's problem was that it was stuck in a time warp but it goes far deeper than that. It's 10 o'clock, and head chef Steve and his number two, Gareth, are only just rolling up for work. You wouldn't get away with that in my kitchen, especially as last year, the restaurant lost 75 grand. These guys just don't seem to be interested in turning the place around. 
How much has the restaurant taken this week? Barely. Yeah. 500 quid. Right. Yeah? yeah? The salaries alone in the kitchen are a thousand pounds. If the restaurant didn't have these functions that are drip feeding into this establishment, yeah. you wouldn't have a job. I personally want to put a fucking rocket up everyone's ass in here today to really make them understand what you should be doing and not bickering and festering on fucking memories from 20 years ago. That means fuck all. It's Sunday lunchtime and there are three diners at the gondola. When there isn't a function on, well, nothing much happens in this kitchen. Right, we are away. We're away. Please. Chef's away as well. He's been away for 30 fucking years. Mains away, chef, please. Not quite ready, Art. Not quite ready. This kitchen is like a retirement home. So how many evenings do you work a week? Three? Three to four. Depends on the business, really. Yeah, just to play by, yeah. It varies. Yeah, what a bizarre setup. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome back. Thank you. They've been coming for 36 years. 36 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. So you are the asset. Yes. So um, if the food was to change, you wouldn't come back. No. No. What you've got? You've got minestrone soup. Minestrone yes. soup, which is. But La Gondola are going to have to risk losing their three regular diners because this is a terrible environment for an aspiring young chef. Number two, Gareth, is only 19, yeah, but he's that. already given up. He was good, wasn't he? They must be soul destroying when the business is so quiet, no? Yeah. Um, motivation wise, no? It's boring. Yeah, very boring. When it's quiet, you just like clock watching until it's 10 o'clock <laughs> so yeah. you can go. Because we can't go early in case someone does come. No. So it's just, you just clock watching all the time. And yeah. I've only seen one person in this kitchen with any real drive or ambition and that's 17-year-old apprentice, Danny Holden. You all right, Danny boy? You're doing a fucking yeah. good job. Yeah, my pleasure. That's where it all started, you know that? I've been in there. Lonely place in amongst all those bubbles. Huh? But trust me, if you get your shit together in there, it goes from bubbles on top of the sink to bubbles in glass and champagne. Would you like a glass of champagne? I'm not old enough. <laughs> Fuck it, we'll sneak it in the fridge. OK, then. Yeah? Yeah. Young chefs need encouragement, but discipline is high on Steve's list of priorities. I don't stand any nonsense. You don't stand no. any nonsense? No, no. And if these don't make it, they go. I've told them all. Out. I don't, I'm not standing for nothing. This one might not last a week. Oh, really? Mm. Oh, yesterday, fuck yesterday was very close. I don't hang around with one warning and two warnings. No? Out the fucking back door, mate. Don't so what you're saying, so you're worse than what, me? What? What? No, what I'm saying is, I don't like shit. Yeah. Out they go. And that right, Gareth? You're no good, you walk. Steve thinks he can talk the talk, but can he really walk the walk? This time I checked out his store cupboard. Oh, fucking hell. Fucking evidence. So, I mean, it looks like fish food, doesn't it? Huh? And it smells fucking disgusting. There you go. Half a container of plastic minestrone soup. Now, we've seen it all smash. Um, what in the fuck a chef does with that, I don't know. The new owner, Daniela, wants La Gondola to be an authentic Italian restaurant, and yet she's completely unaware what's happening in her own kitchen. Um, the minestrone soup is quite a it's hallmark. Good. It is. Yeah. It's very good. It's excellent. Almost as good as my mother's. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, it's great. Why'd you buy it in, Steve? I don't buy it in. I make it myself. So the containers are bought in minestrone soup and the invoice is here? What we do, we'd, we'd mix that 50-50. Uh -huh. We'll sort of give half and half, really. Oh. It, it, it seems to be... Yeah, I'm not clear. What do you mean? Two yeah. bowls? One of no, plastic no, 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 and no, one? No, no, no. We'd make half up with perhaps packet and then put fresh in to it as well. Steve's penny-pinching by bulking up the fresh soup with powdered. But the prices are so out of date on the menu they're hemorrhaging money on a daily basis. The cost of the lamb, nothing more, just mm. the lamb cutlets. Yeah. That whole dish, OK, should be on the menu at £16.50. Right. You're selling it at £10.90. Mm -hmm. But the scary thing is, Steve, that you yeah. don't know that every time we sell that lamb, yeah. we're losing five quid. Yeah. 
Yeah. And if we had a table of four in today, yeah. and they walked in that door, yeah. I swear to God, it'd be a lot easier to fucking stop them at the door and say, there's your five pound, mm. fuck off. Well, oh, we might as well close down now and I can save my money. You know, I'm guided by people who've been here for years and they're telling me they can make money out of that menu. But you were here in place, in position, as the manager when oh, this was put yeah. together. Well, you sorry. can blame me I'm all sorry. you like, but it's my let's, money, Steve, not yes, yours. I know, I know it's your money. Let's, let's, let's carry on. Let's put a structure okay. in place. What about your uh, just a minute, just a minute. Dog. Let's put a structure... Ten pound per room, ten pound per meal. Where Listen, where, it's where my money? restaurant, where, and where, I, where, all where I needed to do was cover costs, all right? And I did more than cover costs on that. This is Stella who does all this, not us. I think you're shouting the wrong person. Stella does this. Don't go off saying this, that and the other. You could be out of a job in a month's time. No one is taking responsibility for La Gondola's problems. Everyone just blames each other. I look at you and I get really nervous because I think you're the kind of cook that's just going to fuck off out here, you know that? I think you're going to get upset one day after listening to the way you spoke to the owner. If that was me, I would have sacked you. And my worry is you're so determined to fucking work in this industry, you need to get excited. You need to start cooking properly. got to get these guys out of this god-awful kitchen and try and lift their morale. So I'm taking them to see one of Derby's most successful businesses. Now. Yeah, Gareth, you drive. Yeah, we're going to look at some history. Right, let's go and look at something beautiful, something that's moved with time. Rolls-Royce, 1933. Look at it. Beautiful. Now, the next one is something quite interesting, because this was made in 1979. Look at it. A bit of history. That Rolls-Royce didn't sit still, yeah, and get moved by the times. They decided to move ahead of the times, the Phantom. What's it like <laughs> in there, Danny? It's nice and comfy. It nice looks and like comfy. I'm in business. And Steve, yeah. do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. They've moved on. Yeah. They haven't just stood there and sort of expected Rolls-Royce to sell. And unfortunately, big boy, when I first saw your food, yeah. I felt like I was stepping in a time capsule. Yeah, I get your point. It's, 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 it's marvellous. It's marvellous, absolutely. I know a chef who's got one of these, you know that. And you're thinking, Gareth, what should I do? Rob a bank or work hard? Rob a bank. Rob a bank. <laughs> <laughs> now, bollocks. Uh, should we nip round and see your mum, Danny? The engine that powers any successful restaurant is its kitchen. And like Rolls-Royce, La Gondola is going to have to create its own modern classics. I'm starting with that lunch menu. What's the secret behind any good Italian restaurant? Pasta. Pasta, exactly. When was the last time you made fresh pasta? Never have. There we go. You're making it. I'm just going to tell you how to make it. So make it well in the centre. That's it. I'm keeping it simple so the chefs have got time to get up to speed. That's it. Out goes the old two-course lunch menu for £6.50. In comes a fresh pasta main with a salad and a glass of wine for £8.95. Season again. See the colour is starting to change now because the saffron's working on there. Fresh pasta is the hallmark of an authentic About Italian restaurant. Its simplicity also makes it a money spinner, far cheaper than those expensive lamb specials. See the colour of it? All of it. Ricotta in. And I want you to taste it as you're doing it. There you go. Now, OK, watch. Yeah, like a parcel, exactly, look. Fold it over. Nip all the air out. Little finger. Over. Left to right, right to left. Use your thumb and push. Totally. Who'd like a go? Yeah, of course you can have a go. Here we go. We've only Danny, been making pasta for 10 minutes. Yeah, and already the young chefs look like they're enjoying themselves. I finally yeah. injected some passion into this kitchen. Good. That you've just done. That was 10 minutes ago. That was your first one. Really? Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's your first. You've never made pasta. And now you've made your first ever tortellini. That's very good. Well, I've asked Danny the Apprentice to come up with a couple of salads for the new menu. Right, oh, what I've done is I've put like tomato and that in the mixing bowl. Good. And, and with the shots and you put like this, that, and like that sort of vinegar stuff over it. And Good. All in it. So, yeah. Okay, have a little taste. Eat with me. And this one is a... Is rocket and parmesan. Good man. Cheese. That's lovely. But the gondola's problems aren't just in the kitchen. To help me relaunch the sinking ship, I've called in the boss of the company that does all my restaurants PR, Joe Barnes. What do you reckon? Well, it certainly makes a first impression. Up the creaky stairs. Wow. Hi, Dan. Hello. Amazing chandelier. And you look at the dance floor, just how many heels 
I've been dancing on this. You can kind of see El Deco doing a special yep. on, you know, interiors yep. frozen in time. Yeah. Um, do you think there's a sellable asset here? Do you think you could sell this restaurant? My first feelings when I come in, and I don't mean to be negative, are start all over again. This place badly needs a refurbishment. Um, you can refurb it. You can yeah. Call it a new name yeah. and start over and really relaunch it. Yeah. However, being with the money. fine, no. what it does no. have is a tremendous amount of authenticity and kind of kitschy appeal. Yeah. And I love the sort of, you know, the Doric columns and the dance floor. And I suppose you've got to work with what you've got. Daniela and her business manager Stella need Joe's help because so far their marketing efforts have hardly set Derby alight. I can't even find it on here. It's supposed to be under restaurants, under Continental. Oh, there we go. Jesus Christ. So we go past all these um, relaxing massage and all these whorehouses, um, and you come down here, and then you get La Gondola. Try our new menus. Booking's now been taken. I mean, you know, you've missed it. I think what you've got to do is identify what your real strengths are here, and that's the family-run business, that's the, the great space you've got with the dance floor, and make them into selling points. You've got to have a punchy message with which you can appeal to your potential customers. Now the restaurant reputation has disappeared. Yeah, the you've reputation got, you... hasn't disappeared. The problem is that people have forgotten about La Gondola. When it hasn't got a bad reputation, definitely not. So it's, it's a good reputation. See, again, you're living in the medium, past. I, I feel you're not being honest with yourself. It has a shit reputation. It hasn't. I'm telling you it has. So you've been to Derby and you've had a word yeah. with all of the customers. Oh, no, hold on a minute. Of all of the pay. customers. There are no customers. The place is empty. So and you're it... telling me that the people who put adverts in the mm -hmm. paper thanking us yep. for a superb wedding, etc. You're missing my point. If you just listen to what I'm trying to tell you, mm. it may make sense in a minute. The add-ons from having a successful restaurant is phenomenal. Right. We haven't got that reputation any longer. The business is on its ass, and the functions over the last 10 years have depleted, accepted. There is no reputation at the gondola, and if you're going to stand there and tell me it's a good place, when a chef buys in minestrone soup, no chance. We need to spread the word around Derby that the gondola is changing, so I've told Stella to get on the phone and round up members of the city business community for a special lunch. A great way to get the message out and a chance to see if Steve can lead his team. My father used to come here for business lunches about 25 years ago. Uh, but in recent times, I have to say, it's not a place that I would have come to. The idea of this lunch today is to get them in and out in 45 minutes. We've banished silver service to speed up the waiters. But can Steve run his kitchen fast enough to keep up? Well, they were busy, quiet, makes no difference to me. I only know one way, and that's the way I do it. Okay, come on. Yeah, you're ready to roll with us, yeah? Yeah. Good man. This is the exciting right, part of the day. Steve. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. I want you to clean around the plates. Yep. Yeah, good boy. Let's go. One frittata, one bruschetta, one tagliatelle. Nice. The new pasta dishes I've devised are hitting the spot. Maybe three sends their compliments. That's the first. Good. Quality, yeah, not bad. Very, very good price as well. But uh, a little bit slow coming out, just a little bit slow. People having a business lunch. Once again, the lack of organisation has dropped the kitchen in it. Jesus Christ. Come on, guys, there's got to be a system in here somewhere. Steve, if you're, uh, if you're confused, yeah, let me know and I'll help you out, yeah? Okay. It's gone all quiet, you see, yeah, you're not sorry. leading it like a head chef. Do you understand? Okay. Where all these three guys including Danny's, coming together at the same time. Yeah, thank but you. But they've got to take your direction, you know that? Yeah, fine. Okay. Yeah, when you ask for it, we'll do, we'll do it fresh, yeah? Outside in the restaurant, there are lots of customers waiting, but all the orders have become mixed up. After that, sorry, yeah. you sent table four, yeah? Three yeah. tagatelli, one knocking, one bruschetta. Yeah. Yeah. They sent them, they've just come back, and so yeah. they're on coffee, you've already sent their main course. Yeah. I'm and now, a whole table has got the wrong dishes. Okay. Start again anyway, it's, 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 gone, it's gone stone cold. What about the starters on table eight? They have it already. Yeah, They've had them. Yeah. Why is it not crossed off, Steve? I no wonder the kitchen's confused. It's so important, man. If you send the starters, why aren't you crossing it off? Uh, table two starters, yeah, this is. That was just 35 covers. I'm planning to completely relaunch the restaurant in only a couple of days' time, with double the number of customers. I'm starting to wonder if Steve is really up to it. So what, what has come out of today's lunch, you know that, yeah. is how 
everyone just works on their own, you know? Yeah. I've seen I think, no I think fucking thing spirit here whatsoever. No, no, no understanding, no coordination, and bringing these guys together has been a fucking nightmare. I know. Fucking hell, I tell you, I'm finding it hard. I'm finding it really fucking hard. Because it's not about teaching an old boy new tricks, it's about getting the old boy to wake up and stop being a lazy bastard. A simple risotto, bruschetta, frittata, tagliatelle of chicken, and they're still in the shit. La gondola is up the creek without a paddle. The kitchen's getting by with boughting apple pies and the staff don't pull together. I don't know which way you have it, you both. In less than 48 hours, a new owner, Daniela, is relaunching the restaurant. I woke up at five o'clock this morning. I uh, don't have to s often swear, but I was shit scared. The trouble is, Daniela's head chef has been treading water, opening a tin of tuna or a packet of powdered soup. I want to redesign the menu for the relaunch, but what can Steve actually cook? Season, I've asked him to prepare me a dish using fresh ingredients only. So what's in there? Butter? We've got butter. Red onions. Red onions. A little bit of olive oil. Yeah. Fennel. Fresh fennel. And just a little bit of orange zest. Mm-hmm. Flour. And where did this idea come from? When I was a commie, we used to do it. Um, when I worked down in Oxford. Down so here. 35 years ago? Quite a long time, yeah. yeah. Steve is cooking me a dish of rustic Italian trout. That smells gorgeous. And then we can dress it up. Yeah. Um, I was a little bit miffed when you're frying the um, the trout, the fact you hadn't taken the scales off. Right. So already I've got to eat this with a pile of shit in my mouth. Why don't you scale the fish? Sorry. Just time, it was. Time? Yeah. yeah. It looks like you forgot. I think that's pretty dismal. Yeah. Yeah. For a 51-year-old chef to produce that part of shit, I'm fucking yeah. gobsmacked. Yeah. The scales are on there, it's all in the roof of my mouth, the fucking alcohol's not burnt off, it's... Yeah. Fucking hell, Steve. After Steve's dismal effort, I want to find out if the other chefs can do any better. Tuna's very tasty. You don't need that sauce. For me, you've just fucked that dish by putting that glue on there. Yeah. That sort of gloppy, stodgy yes. wallpaper paste that, in fact, I'd offer that to Daniela to fucking plaster the front of the gondola, you know that? Because that looks like a pile of shit there as well. What, what's, that, what's that in there? Inside. Yeah. Oh, you, the, the chicken's inside? Yeah. Is this a Polish dish? No, no. Yeah. The chicken's raw. raw. Now, um, unfortunately, I, uh, I can't afford to fuck off and die right now. And I don't want to catch salmonella in fucking Derby, so um, put that straight in the bin. Yeah. yeah. I've been poisoned once before and it's not going to fucking happen again. It's so scary. We really are in trouble here. I've never sent this message out before in a restaurant. I tell them, fucking move your ass, get on with it, otherwise you're out. But I'm going to tell you guys to stop and give up. Don't fight it if you don't want to change. And when that change comes in, be prepared to work fucking hard. We've got to get rid of all this crap. We can't carry 80, 89 dishes. What's it like when this man's off in the night and you've got 25 books? It must be mad, no? When you cook like that, do you actually think that you're fit enough to call yourself a chef if you're defrosting things and deep frying mushrooms? And is it important for you to cook or are you really seriously interested in staying the way you are? You are, you definitely want to cook. Yeah? Away? Yeah. Oh, There's nothing complicated in this, no. The only option is to go right back to basics. I've devised a new dinner menu that's so simple, hopefully it's foolproof. A light gnocchi with salmon and tarragon, and a simple tomato and mozzarella risotto. That's the tomato juice, yeah. it's just a little bit too thick. Too thick, yeah. Even this kitchen surely can't cock these dishes Where's up. The, uh... Come on. Fresh. Fragrant mix. Stand up, please, Steve. Thank you. Gareth, it's really hard for you to understand at 19 how modern we're trying to put the approach. Yeah. yeah, nothing's coming out of a fucking packet. Nothing's coming out underneath, cooked fucking three days ago. It's just clean, fresh. And just think back to that phantom, that roller. Is it worth getting out of bed in the morning? Yeah, fucking right it is. Good. Really easy. OK. Yeah, so it doesn't all stick.
Danny's never been given his own section, so I'm going to see how he does with the vegetables. You've got to look after them, you know, almost as if you're sort of in love with them. Yes, so, Beautiful. It's warm, isn't it? It's very warm, isn't it? Huh? Welcome to the real world of the kitchen, big boy. You're sweating. Yeah. Huh? That looks cool. First time. Is it the first time you're sweating? In the kitchen, yeah. Good man. Yep. So now we've done the uh, peppers. Yep. The aubergine. The butternut squash. Yes. And now, all of a sudden, big boy, over the last couple of hours, yes, you've been running the vegetable section. Mm -hmm. Move your ass. We now have a new contemporary menu for the relaunch. So Time to chuck out the chintz. Stella, let me ask you something. You're sat. Just come and touch us a minute. And close your eyes and just touch it. Close my eyes and touch yeah. it. Yeah. Horrible. Fucking disgusting. Dirty, Dirty no. grubby, smelly, hey. plastic hey. flowers. Yeah? The clutter on the tables. Martin, it's looking like it's all yeah. come out of the fucking pound shop. Okay. You know, you're like an old fucking woman that just won't throw anything away. Yep. Get rid yeah. of it. It's yeah? going tonight. Good. It's like going to a, um, an airport lounge and looking at one of the chapels of rest. <laughs> it's the kind of thing you'd see in there when you sort of sit down and grieve. I mean, I'm sorry, but they're fucking awful. Catch, get hold of them all and lob them in the skip. Yeah? Pleasure. Yeah, good man. <laughs> Already? Whew. I feel like, fucking hell, I got rid of my granny's pants. They're off. They're no longer up here. I'm starting to think about wearing a nice, sexy pair of knickers because I've just seen the white tablecloth go down. That's how I feel in here. It looks clean and yeah. fresh. Would you wear knickers up to there, Stella? Oh, don't start, Gordon. <laughs> Stick I'm to the restaurant. I'm just asking. <laughs> Would you wear a pair of no, granny knickers no, up to I here? Wouldn't. No, so get rid of the flowers. <laughs> but I have discovered one thing from the past worth hanging on to. So this is from the whole classic menu we used to have. Uh -huh. Yeah. All done on the table? All done on the table. And so now you've stopped it because it's on the yeah, old menu? Yeah, I mean, at one time, Saturday night, it used to be just one person just do the cooking all night. So you're taking that to, what, lightly brown? Just go, nice and golden brown. I've asked Martin for a demo because I think the flambés are due for a comeback. Jesus Christ. Did you miss this? Oh, yeah. You're so fucking good at it. Yes, I hope so. I try to do my best anyway. But this should be the um, hallmark of the restaurant, this. This is, um, this is art. Thank you. Pleasure. Christ almighty. If they taste as good as they look, fucking they're hell. going back on the menu. No, it's fine. Mm. They're to die for. They are fucking delicious. Who needs a wine list when you get pissed on the dessert? It's the day of the relaunch. As well as bringing back the flambés, I've decided to resurrect the gondola's dance floor. A house band is booked, and the waiting staff finally look the part. There will be 70 covers in tonight, double the numbers of diners that we had in for the business lunch. It's a real okay, test for the kitchen. They're really going to have to pull together if they want to carry it off. I've put Danny in charge of a staff dinner. They don't normally have them here, but they're a great way yeah, to build team idea. spirit. What else have you got? Yeah. Most important thing about staff dinner, big boy, is clearing out the fridge, yes? Okay. So we've got to move now, big boy. We've got ten minutes to get this ready, yes? Um, Steve, I think you could really take his, uh, his own little sort of world there, doing these staff lunches and that. You know that? We'll give him that little yeah. vote of confidence. Yeah, why not? Huh? Unfortunately, Steve yeah. doesn't seem very confident. With only an hour until the no. first guests arrive, I'm worried. No? Sure. You're running around getting all your plates and bits and bobs, but mm. I saw that a week ago. You're all boxed off. No, I, I was intending to go around in the mall and just make sure everybody knows what's what's yep. going on tonight and what I need and when I shout for it, what I want. Yep. When but I it, want it's, it. it's all very well. It's in yeah. your mind, but yeah. the, the, the well, that's problem what I'm saying. is I've got to yeah. talk to them now. Yeah, it's sort of you know, yeah. offloading it and get yeah. them to understand. Sure. Yeah. Sure. There's a feeling there, but I'm not sure if it's nervousness or not. I get stressed as much as anybody else. I'm only I'm only human, so. Maybe I get stressed more than anybody else, I don't know. Mm. Oh, the is gorgeous. Congratulations, Daniel. That's really good. Steve, you're not eating? <sighs> well, I've had two meals since last Friday. You've had two meals since last Friday? Yeah, I'm just off it at the moment. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really worried about Steve. He seems very, very nervous. The menus we've got? Yeah. Everything is in place and ready to roll. But at the last minute, Steve bottles it. Right, listen, um, I'm running the hot plate tonight. Shouldn't really be running the hot plate, but Steve's asked if I'd run the hot plate to make sure that we get up to speed. Yep, yeah, communication, chemistry, understanding. 
Yeah, working for each other. Yeah. Gareth, yep, what are we going to do tonight if you get flustered and frustrated? What are you going to do? Ask for help. Yeah, and take it out on your what? Pasta. That's right, <laughs> take it out on your pasta. <laughs> Not Daniela. <laughs> Enjoy it. Smile. I'll be behind you every ounce of the way. Smile. There's another. Order on. One tortellini, one parma ham with figs, one antipasto, one linguine. Main course, one gnocchi, one tuna, one salmon, one lamb. Not one fucking answer. Yes, chef. Yes. Thank you. Good boy. I shouldn't be nice. doing this. Steve needs to be able to run his kitchen properly himself. So I'm only going to get him started. So three minutes on the hot plate. One gnocchi, one tuna, one salmon, one lamb. Yeah. Steve, tomorrow you're on your own. And I just wish that you implemented a system like this ten years ago before. You know that. I do. So it would be so fucking hard now at the age of fifty-one. Yeah. Thank you. Fourteen. Go. Right, Gareth, watch the cooking on the pasta, please, yeah? Next time, I'm going to be down on your bollock. Two lamb, one ribeye, one tuna. Yes, chef. Yeah? Nicely. Put it on that plate nicely. As if you're in love with it, yeah? Fresh tarragon on the top. Come on. How does it feel to be cooking normally? No, no. Different. Yeah, Different. no, no, no. No, 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 no sorry, it's but... exciting. Once we get the, the, in the system, it'll be good. Yeah. 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 It's the only way, Steve. Yeah. Yeah? yeah sure. I can stay here and run this, yeah. but you're fucking benefiting jack shit, mate. True yeah. Enough. You're going to have to do it yourself now, you know that? Yeah. Run your kitchen and run your team. Yes, sure. OK, and if I hear you silent and not talking to them, yeah? yeah. Hey, yes, I'm going to ram that fork up your ass. Oh, it's a big one. Yeah? Fucking yeah. right. <laughs> For the first time in 15 years, Martin's back, cooking up a storm with the flambe. Good music, efficient and stylish table service. At last, La Gondola is swinging again. Three lamb, two ribeyes, one tuna. Right. Anna, can you send Joanna in, please? Don't understand what all these arrows mean. So, two medium. One well done. That's a medium, is it? So? Your first main course is three lamb. They haven't even started so, clearing the starters yeah. yet, OK? Thank you. As the atmosphere in the restaurant hots up, the kitchen is going into slow motion. No. Cross it off. What about that other table of four here? Two ribeye, one tuna, one salmon. OK. You're going to acquire Where's that salad? Ready? Right, tuna. When the kitchen does get the food out, it's going down a treat. I've never seen a lady clean a plate so quick in my life. It's like taking a portable dishwasher out for dinner. It's <laughs> been beautiful. Really, really nice to enjoy authentic Italian. It's been very nice. If they, if they stand up to the reputation that they set tonight, we'll come back. The new menu has been a success, but since I handed him the hot plate, Steve struggled, and he's only got through it by the skin of his teeth. Come on, Steve. Right. Last table. Yeah. Fucking hell. Right, Gareth. Come in here. Danny, turn off the stoves. Right, how was that for you? Truthfully. Could have been better. Huh? Could have been better. Could have been more smoother, more communication. Yeah. Yeah. Who can that communication come from, Steve? Me. Hallelujah. It's been a bloody hard week, but I think we've shown the staff that the old gondola has life in her yet. Fucking hell. £2,000 in one night. The restaurant alone, last week, took 500 quid. Now, there's the insight to what this place is capable of doing. And it's only down to one thing. What is it, Steve? Hard work. That's all. Hard work. <laughs> This kitchen was so far behind the times, even I considered throwing the towel in. We struggled through a birthday function and then a business lunch. But the dinner dance showed how La Gondola can get the good times back. I've implemented a new menu and a new ethos in the kitchen. But can they really build on the momentum when I'm not there to hold their hands? Morning, water. Danny, the apprentice, does have the makings of a good chef. You've seen over the week that you can cook in the staff food. It's a really nice thing for you to do once a day. 
Huh? I said to him the other day, I said, I want to cook. I don't want to be like stuck on pots and that. No, you're too good for that. Gareth also has a chance of making it if he knuckles down. You've learnt me more stuff than he has in three years, really. Mm. There's someone deep down inside there that's tucked away that's dying to he learn. Wants to come out. Well, wants to come out, so fucking get it out. Last week we but Steve first. still worries me. Well, it's more atmospheric. Mm. I think you've fucking forgotten the word cooking, passion, exciting. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so you're uh, right. It's been switched off for a long time. It's all been rusted up. It's, it's, yeah. Unless we loosen the nut, it's, it's, it's just going to keep on loosening up now, I think. I'm not going to quit on it. I'm going to give it the fucking best. You see if I don't. Come back. Oh, fuck me, I'll be back. Yeah, you come back. Whether or not you'll be here when I get back will be a different matter. Last summer, I spent a week at La Gondola in Derby, my most testing kitchen nightmare. A restaurant 30 years out of date. It's like stepping back in time, isn't it? It is, and I wondered whether should we really decorate it or wait till the fashion turns? No customers. It has a shit reputation. And one of the worst head chefs I've ever met. For a 51-year-old chef to produce that pile of shit, I'm fucking gobsmacked. But somehow, I managed to get the place swinging again. Four months later, I'm back. Oh. And someone's in the gondola. Who on earth is that in there? Go. OK. Ooh. How are you? Fine. Good. <laughs> Quick kiss. What's the matter? Well, I'd have done my hair. I'd have got changed. You don't need to do that for me. Steve. He's obviously getting ready for dinner. Steve left. He walked out. He walked out. Gave me a week's notice as soon as you left. The minute I left, he walked out? He didn't have the energy, thought about it, and he was out of here. I didn't have the him, energy? I begged him to stay, but he said, no, his mind is made up. I think he's got a job in a pub now. Job in a pub? Yes. So what kind of food? Well, what the general manager calls ding-ding food. You put it in a microwave and out it comes. Yeah, in a way... I'm not that upset because if he wasn't prepared to pull on the rope and actually help get the place mm. back, who's in there now? Who's the chef? Oh, you have to see. This man saved my life. Hello, Wayne. How are you? I'm not too bad at all. Yeah, Gordon. Really? Nice to see you. Nice. Excellent. Yeah. So the style of the menu. What is the style of the menu? Um, style of menu, but not. I've only arrived yesterday. Okay. Um, so. Uh, so we've had no. Sorry. Excuse me. We've had no chefs since. No, no, no. I did experiment with at least four other chefs. I went through one who was Feng Shui, who would only cook in a certain direction. Feng Shui. Feng Shui, yeah. <laughs> well, Even whatever. Wayne's pissing himself. I did research round because, it know, turns out Daniela road tested yes, several head yeah, chefs after right. Steve jumped ship. At least she's trying not to make the same mistake yeah, twice. Friday, we had about 20. Uh, where's <laughs> Gareth? He's still here. Uh, no, uh, well, he finished up uh, yesterday. She's been poached by Steve to go and work in a pub when he can work here. But the money was too much of a temptation, I'm afraid. Yeah, that's shocking. I'm pissed off that Gareth didn't stick it out, but I think a clean slate is the only way forward for Daniela. Yeah, and someone was trying to constantly pull, constantly pulling the wool over this woman's Absolutely. eyes. Absolutely. And unfortunately, because she was so nice and so gentle, yeah. Yeah. everybody was taking the piss out of her. I, I, and it's becoming a laughing stock. Absolutely. Now yeah. she's got the bull by the horns, yeah. she shook yeah. it, and she's got rid of the fucking cobwebs. Please tell me Danny's here. Working, he's working tonight. He's working tonight. Okay. Uh, Danny, have you missed me? Yes, I have. I miss you too as well, you know that big man. Yeah. Huh? Yes, big man. <laughs> Little fucker. <laughs> Danny's responded to my encouragement and taken up new responsibilities. Uh, Daniel, can you get the cream, please? Daniel! Perhaps he and Wayne are the dynamic duo that will give La Gondola the stability that it desperately needs. At the bottom shelf, basil. Uh, in the package, yeah? Quick as you can, please. But the proof's in the tasting. I'm having Wayne's butternut squash soup. I hope it's better than Steve's packet minestrone. Really nice colour. That smells amazing. And, um... Mm. It's nice. It's not difficult to make. A very simple, homemade, rustic soup. But it... You know, it speaks volumes about a restaurant. They've built on the live music theme, Martin's still got his old magic, and he's now flambéing main courses as well as desserts. 
looks fantastic. Yep. You sound brilliant yep. and it smells amazing. Yep. You actually taste it. My very own steak, Diane. And. Steak's nice and rare. The taste is exactly how it should be. Very good. Daniel has retained my simpler, more contemporary menu, and they're cooking with fresh ingredients rather than opening a tin or a packet. And the takings have quadrupled since I was last here. That was lovely. Thank and I'm you. really pleased it was lovely. And you've got the simplest things right. Well, you've made me feel very brave about it. Mm -hmm. And I just needed someone to open my eyes up to yeah. what's dreams and what's yeah. reality. Thank God she's woken up. She thought she'd bought success. She'd bought a restaurant full of baggage and a chef that didn't give a fuck. Now she's got the basics right, she moves forward, and this place does have a chance of surviving for the next 30 years, providing they continue. Good food, good service, bit of atmosphere, and enjoy what you're doing. It's not difficult.